The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 14th chapter. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of the leader of the Pharisee to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When Jesus noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, Give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who are exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He also said to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, in case they, inv they may invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rules. For dinner When you arrive, allow the host to seat you. Reserve the best seat for the guest of honor. The host sits to the left of the guest of honor. Always sit with your back straight and your feet on the floor. Nobody can do those Wait for the host to unfold their napkin, then unfold your own and place it in your lap. Don't start eating until everyone is served. Pass food to the right. Hold the platter or bowl so the person next to you can serve themselves. When you take a drink, place your knife and fork near the center of your plate, slightly angled in an inverted V, with the tips of the knife and fork pointing to each other. That's six of hundreds of rules you can find about how to sit, eat, drink, talk, and behave at dinner. There's whole books and classes you can take just on how to behave appropriately at dinner. It's pretty amazing. We've turned something as simple as sharing a meal with one another into a weighty task with hundreds of rules that can divide people by those who know the rules and those who don't. Jesus spends a lot of time eating. Whether it's sharing meals in the homes of family and friends of his disciples, eating with religious leaders, eating with the poor, feeding the 5,000, or cooking fish on the shore after his resurrection, Jesus spends a lot of time talking about food and eating. In today's text, we find Jesus again gathered with others around a meal. The text says they are watching Jesus closely, but Jesus is watching them too. After seeing who is invited and how they arrange themselves around the table, it seems like maybe Jesus is adding to the list of rules of etiquette. So first, when you go to dinner, sit furthest from the place of honor. That way, if you, were not to, if you were not to be honored with a bit better seat, no big deal. But if the host wants you to have a higher place of honor, you'll be asked to move, and everyone will see how honored you are. Okay, easy enough, I guess. But it seems a bit too worrisome over where you get to sit. Second, when you invite guests, don't invite family, friends, or important people don't like them anyway. <laughs> These people will try to repay you gener with generosity by inviting you to a dinner later. Instead, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. This one seems a bit harsh. First, we tend to like to have eat meals with our friends and family. And if you keep eating with the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, won't they become your friends? Then you'll have to stop inviting them. <laughs> it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If you take this passage in its most literal sense and try to apply it to the way we eat meals, trying to understand this text as another couple of rules surrounding the practice of meals, it's confusing and seems to have little to do with the overarching mission of Jesus. Turkish weddings are huge affairs that start on a Tuesday and end on a Thursday. 
three days filled with singing and dancing and eating and laughing. On the final day, the official wedding ceremony takes place, and then a huge meal is served for friends and family. A Turkish couple, whose names I won't mispronounce on video, <laughs> decided to do something a little different. When it came time for the large meal at the end of three days of celebrating, rather than host a feast for family and friends, they put on aprons, took their place behind the counter, and served the food to 4,000 Syrian refugees living in dire poverty nearby. The family told reporters that eating such a huge meal was unnecessary, especially with so many people living in need next door. There's something happening, something powerful here in these stories of Jesus and that Turkish couple. Whether it's Jesus sitting down at the home of a Pharisee or a wedding feast in Turkey, an ordinary, everyday event is being transformed into something extraordinary. It's not about rules of etiquette, and it's certainly not about making sure you're honored or getting some reward. We believe that a sacrament is an ordinary, everyday thing in which Christ becomes fully present to us through the power of the Spirit. So in baptism, the everyday water we drink is poured over our heads, and through the Spirit we are joined to Christ's death and resurrection. In the Eucharist, in Holy Communion, we take the earthly grain and grape, bread and wine, but in them we receive the living Christ for healing and salvation the extraordinary clothed in the ordinary, everyday stuff of this world. And while we may celebrate two sacraments within the Lutheran Church, seven among our Catholic friends, I propose there are other everyday things and events and places that bear the resurrected Jesus in our midst. While not sacraments, per se, perhaps we can call them sacramental. And I think that's what's going on in today's text. Rather than listing more rules around the practice of sharing meal or telling us how to earn God's favor, Jesus is showing us how the everyday, ordinary things and practices of our lives are moments where the Spirit of God opens our hearts and minds to the kingdom. There are things and events and places where the presence of Christ the fullness of the healing, comforting, and life-saving power of Jesus become so present in our world, we can touch them and taste it. The kingdom of God, the presence of Jesus, comes alive in our world in glimpses. We taste it when we share communion together. We see it every time someone is baptized into Christ. We see it when refugees are fed. We see it when those who are the outcasts of our society, are invited as honored guests. We see it when people go out of their way to love and support those fighting for equality and justice. We see it when people stand together to protest injustice inflicted on their community. We see it when out of love and support for those in our community, the abundance of tables of school supplies are sent into the community for those who don't have as much. Today's gospel isn't so much about eating and about meals. It's about the way we share meals can be reflection of God's kingdom, breaking into this world, in the ordinary things we do every day. If we're willing to admit, admit it, those of us seated here lead, lead relatively privileged lives. Most of us have access to resources that others in our country and our world dream of. For many of us, life was full of options, lots of doors that could be opened to us, and freedom to choose. Living in this context, we often identify ourselves with the host of Jesus' parable, the one who needs to be reminded to invite the poor, the blind, the crippled, and the lame. And we do. But it's not just about how we share meals. It's about what God's kingdom looks like. And in God's kingdom, Christ is the host and we are the invited guests. We are the poor, the lame, the blind, the deaf, the broken, the beaten down, the ones who have lost hope, the angry, the self-centered, the sinner. 
We're the ones who don't deserve to share in God's goodness and abundance. We are the ones who, if God worked like we humans do, would be left out of the party. But not so through Christ. The sharing of meals in our world is a reflection of God's kingdom, and you are invited. No matter who you are or what you've done or what others say about you, Christ invites you to the table. No matter your race, your gender, or your sexuality, you have a seat at this table. Whether this is your first Sunday in church or you've been going your whole life, a place of honor has been set. Whether your faith is strong as a rock or if on this day you're not sure if you believe or not, Christ welcomes you without qualification. And we sit down as equals and as friends, as brothers and sisters and sharers in Christ's kingdom, and are fed by God's love through Jesus. The table set by Christ is open to all who hunger in any way. Come and be fed.